everyone, my name is Marie Wallin and John and Juliet and the team have asked me to put together this short video just to tell you a little bit more about me, my work and how I've come to be doing what I do now and how John and Juliet helped me develop my lovely British Breeds yarn which they um, make for me. I live here in Leicestershire, so I live in the countryside, I live in a small village with my husband and my two lovely dogs, Nora and Nellie, you may have seen pictures of them on my Instagram feed um, and it's really lovely where we live. We're very very lucky to live in the countryside. We just literally can walk out our door in all directions and we've got some really really lovely walks that we can do from our doorstep. So we are extremely lucky which has really hit home in the last year when we've all been locked down. Um, so it makes me feel very very thankful. We live in um, a really nice cottage which we've renovated and we have a lovely garden and I have an allotment I love gardening so that brings me onto my hobby I just lose myself in, in my garden um, I love growing vegetables and um, hence that's why I've got an allotment um, so because I don't have enough space in my garden here at home to to grow all the big crops so like things like potatoes onions garlic um, but I, I grow some of the smaller crops here at home um, as well but I love flowers, I love cut, cut flowers, I've always got cut flowers in the house I had spent a fortune on cut flowers in the winter but in the summer I grow all my own so um, which is great as well. Other hobbies really, I love music, I love all sorts of music really um, well, probably my first love is classical music um, so there's a, a lot of classical music that I do love and probably my favourite composer um, is uh, Ludovica Anardi. Um, I just love his work and um, when I listen to his music I just get lost and transported to a different place. So let me start with how I became a knitwear designer. Well I graduated from Leicester Polytechnic which is now De Montfort University back in 1986 so a long long time ago and from then on I've always worked in the textile industry as a designer so for many years I worked as a commercial knitwear designer for um, a manufacturer here in Leicestershire and we made um, designs for most of the high street really all the high street except for Marks and Spencers um, and then they sadly had to close um, back in 2004-2005 and it was then that I was very lucky to see the, the job advertised for an in-house designer at Rowan. Well I was very familiar with Rowan because I've always loved hand knitting um, and my mother taught me how to hand knit when I was about six or seven years old but I was also taught at school um, and I always did a little bit of knitting so I've always had that love of it and um, but when I first graduated from Leicester Polytechnic I worked for a manufacturer in Nottingham just for 18 months then I left there and started my own business um, doing hand hand um, knitting machine garments and also hand knits and it was there that I became familiar with Rowan and because at that time Rowan produced yarn on 250 gram cones for domestic machine knitters um, and that is what I used um, and I also then they gave me the, the lovely Shea cars um, with an idea of encouraging me to do had some hand knits which I also did so um, so as I say, that was when I first became aware of Rowan and from then on I was always a fan. I just loved their design ethics, ethics and um, I loved the publications, how they were photographed and everything. So they were very much an inspiration to me um, back then. And then obviously I went back into, I met my husband and decided to go back into um, employment and so therefore for many years as I say I was in the commercial industry um, but then obviously I was very very lucky to get the job at Rowan um, and then ended up being um, head designer um, and I was responsible for the Rowan magazine um, and um, really for eight nine years um, I had to leave in 2014 because I um, uh, had I was became very ill. I had um, a heart attack, so that made me 
um, readdress my life and what I was doing. So I gave up my job with Rowan and started um, started my own business, which is what I do now. And Rowan were very, very good to me at the time and they put me on a retainer. So what that meant is that all I had to do was to do so many designs for them a year and then I had um, like a monthly income, if you like, from that, which helped me grow my business. And then as my business grew, I reduced that retainer down. So I actually reduced the amount of work that I was doing from them. I wasn't doing any other... Um, aspect of the job that I previously did for them so it was just really literally pure design so I would do some designs hand them over and, and that was it um, and then I actually came out of contract with them um, back in I think the beginning of 2017 um, and it was that year that I decided to do my first collection using a non rowan yarn and that happened to be Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift um, and the resulting collection was Shetland, which has been a phenomenally successful book. Um, and then um, sort of the next year, was, next year, I more or less decided that it may be a good time to start looking at developing my own yarn because um, obviously I had rowing yarn I could use, I could use Jameson's of, of Shetland, and there was other companies' yarns that, you know, there's quite a few companies that wanted me to design using their yarns and things. And I just thought, well, you know, really, it would be really good to have my own yarn. And I'm only interested in producing one yarn. I'm, I'm not inter interested in producing a yarn range as such uh, with several different yarn types. So um, what I wanted was a yarn that would be around for many, many years and I'll be just adding colours to it, really. And I wanted a yarn that was um, great for knitting fair isle, obviously, because that's what I'm known for. But also um, for standalone um, solid colour garments, like stitch garments and, and um, designs like that. So um, I obviously I had a lot of criteria of what I wanted my yarn to be. Um, I've got a lot of experience with um, yarns, really from my days as being a commercial designer, I was very heavily involved in yarn development then, and obviously I was taught it on my degree course as well. Um, so um, so I, I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be a four-ply yarn. I wanted it to be completely British, and I wanted it to be made up of several different wool blends um, which will give it certain characteristics um, and that's when um, we started to, to develop the British Breeds yarns. I think I first spoke to John, it was at Fibre East, I think it was in, two, it may have been in 2017 when we first started talking about it and he's going to correct me if I'm wrong about that but I think it was 2017 but literally from the from the start when we were um talking about it to when we actually when it was actually launched um was was two years so I, I launched it back in 2018 um I think I launched it was back down back in Yarndale which was the last Yarndale I've done to be honest for one reason or another so we first first of all started off with a blend of um, three different British breeds yarn and a blend blended with um, British alpaca, which was going to be left undyed. So, because I wanted this grayed off um, effect, I didn't want the colours to be solid, solid. So, I wanted it to be blended in some way. Um, the resulting yarn was absolutely beautiful. I absolutely loved it. But the the sample that we first did was completely undyed. Um, and it was just beautiful. And then when John went to um, dye it, it just killed the actual fibre, if you like, the actual handle of, of the yarn. It um, became quite drapey and quite heavy. And I was very, I was very um, mindful of the fact that if, you know, if one were knitting a, a garment, the garments would be too heavy, they wouldn't hang right or they wouldn't wear particularly well so um, we had to go back to the drawing board and so I wanted something that would give a little bit more springiness to the yarn um, take weight out of it um, and it was John who actually suggested to put swarbles into it which gives this real sort of springy feel 
to the actual yarn and because we leave it undyed it that it's that that gives it its sheepy smell which was also very important to me so um so my british breeds yarn which i've got some i've got some um, actually here is the raw um and here is a color called blossom so so the british breeds yarn is made up of four different british breeds so we've got blue face leicester which is the softest of our, our british breeds here in the uk uh, followed by devon exmoor which is probably the next softest if you like and um, it's an extremely white produces an extremely white fleece which also maybe help the uptake of color when we come to dye the actual fiber um, and then we've got some Wensleydale in there which gives the yarn a slight luster and also helps the springiness of the yarn and then the swarbles which is undyed so the colours themselves have this sort of greyed off brown sort of effect um, so making the colours, um, the, so it knocks the colour back so it's which is important I think for fur isle or my type of fur isle knitting so just sort of like going back to the yarn um, as I say I'm so pleased with the resulting the resulting yarn that we got was was really what I, I wanted and then to create even more bounce um, and softness in the yarn I decided to have it um, steam relaxed um, so then so obviously when John spun the yarn he then sends it for, for me up to Bradford to Edward Hills which are a, a finishing company and they steam relax the yarn which helps fill the yarn out so it becomes a little bit more lofty and then they actually ball it, ball band it and then um, they send it then down to my warehouse and my warehouse is in Wolverhampton. Um, my printer who prints all my books, he now stocks all my products. So all my books, all my kit, even but they make up all my kits and they stock all my yarn and um, and then they send everything out for me. So when I get a, an order in my shop, we import we input that order from our system into their into Richard's system in Wolverhampton and then from there and um, they send the order out. Um, which is great for me now because I was getting to the point where I was just sending out um, orders, packing things up, making kits up and, and the like. So now um, I'm a bit more freer to do a lot of different things really. Obviously the great thing about having your own business and designing is that I can design exactly what I want and my first love is pattern. Um, pattern and colour as you can probably see from here so um, so it's great so obviously as a designer working for someone else you have to most often or not having to design things that you don't necessarily like yourself which is actually quite difficult um, um, so now I'm doing exactly what I want to do and there's no one telling me what to do um, I absolutely love what I do and I consider myself very, very lucky um, to be able to do this. So the yarn, uh, you know, I am just absolutely thrilled with it. I love it. I love knitting it myself. I know I'm biased because it's my yarn, but I do actually love knitting it. Um, and it washes and wears really well. Um, I mean, the garment I'm wearing now, which is Primrose from Gentle, but it's the Od a new O'Donnell um, colorway. Um, I must... I wear this a lot so it's probably one of my favorite jumpers so um, and it's been washed about three times now and you can see it just you know it just washes and wears really really well um, and uh, as I say I'm, I'm just so thrilled with it and I now have 20 colors available in it so it was launched in 2018 so I was right with, with Yarndale with 12 colors then the year after I launched four new colours, four other colours, and then last year I launched another um, four colours, so that, that makes the 20. Now the four colours that was launched last year actually should have coincided with the launch of a new book called Cherish, but because of obviously Covid and what's happened with locking down and everything, I couldn't photograph that collection and that's being photographed in November this year. And Cherish is um, it's quite a special collection because I've chosen um, some of my favourite designs from my previous books, even books that I've used Rowan yarn, so, um, but under my own label. Um, and I've, re I've recoloured some of them, I've altered some of them, 
um, but all they're all knitted in the British Breeds yarn. So and some of the you know I'm really really pleased the results of that. So um, that is going to be a collection of twelve garments. Um, as I say, we're photographing that back um, in November this year, and then I'm hoping to release it at the back end of this year. So in in December sometime, um, and then um, I'm also in the in the middle of collect of designing. Um, a new collection well it's a, it's actually a quite a big collection because it also includes menswear but i've now decided because i've designed so many designs um i'm splitting it up into two so there will actually be two new collections after cherish so i will release another one next year and maybe the third one towards the end of next year or even into 2023 gosh that sounds such a long way away I have currently two books, two collections that support my yarn. Um, so it, it the yarn was launched, as I say, back in 2018 with the collection Wildwood, which is what you see here. Um, and there's been um, quite a few design of these designs, which have been a very popular and they're still available as, as kits, such as Hawthorne, which is the front cover, and then um, a a really lovely cardigan called chestnut they're still available as kits which you can get direct from my website um, and then the, my current book um, which um, which was out in 2019 which is gentle here um, which has been really really popular probably as popular as Shetland um, it's um, it, you know a lot I think there isn't really probably the most popular design is, is primrose in there followed by honeysuckle you're probably wondering what this is on the mannequin here well this is uh, the tapestry rat which was for our club six the knit along for this is now finished um but the fur club if you're not familiar with it is um is a uh is a knit along but it's limited to 500 knitters um so it's um but once you are a member once you've joined one of the one of the clubs you're then able to buy any of the previous patterns but uh, beyond that these patterns are not available anywhere else um because i wanted it to i wanted it to be um i suppose exclusive is the wrong word really because um it isn't you know it's it, it's um, it's like if you like similar to a limited a limited edition version of a piece of art really um so that you know because the more people i think the more people that that end up knitting it the more this the uniqueness and the specialness would would disappear really um so um it is limited to 500 people and i just do it once a year um, I do publicise it via my newsletter, so if you are interested, then subscribe to my newsletter, which you can do via my website, um, and then um, you'll know when the booking will op will open. Um, I mean, it was a bit crazy last year because the booking for this really took me by surprise, and the whole thing was sold out in two hours, which was absolutely amazing. Um, but the whole idea is for um, people to improve their hand-knit hand fur owl skills. So um, this particular garment uses all 20 colours and it has different techniques. Um, so I always try and create a design which is not just unique. Um, you won't really see anything like it anywhere else. Um, but it uses, I try and put in as many techniques as I can. So this particular garment, obviously, it's knitting ferrule in the round. So we're steaking. So you're, you're, you're learning about steaking, how to cut steaks, different methods of steaking. You're also knitting ferrule flat. So, um, so I'll show you how to do that. Then there's short row shaping in this garment. Then there's picking up stitches. There's grafting. Um, so that gives you an idea of the 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 type of thing and then it's all supported with really quite comprehensive videos of each particular section so you know at any one stage you know what what you've got to do it's been really really popular i now also have a facebook group 
for the particular club which is obviously just available for the members and on there they can obviously socialise but I also do have been doing some like knit chat so if people want to ask questions they can email some questions through and then I, I talk about it there on, online in the group. So obviously I'm wearing Primrose which is probably the most popular garment but as I say this is the O'Neill version which again is also available as a kit. Now this is the um, the one that's in the book so you can see there's a slight difference so you've got more of the quince colour so it's more of the the gold, it's a more of a gold colour um, with this sort of O'Neill blues. Um, and most of these designs are available as kits. Then we've got um, Bramble which is an, um, another favourite of mine um, which has got different colour, different feral patterns uh, for the sleeve and on the on the body so that's sort of and that is knitted flat um, then we've got honeysuckle which is quite a traditional cardigan which has been very very popular which you can see here again knitted flat I mean any of these flat ones you can actually knit in the round especially a cardigan um, but you would just have to sort of rearrange the um, some of the feral sections so that they um, finish and end symmetrically at the the, the front at the um, front because this is where you're going to stick and that and this and you will start and end your rounds on at the front. Um, then we've got Campion, which is um, which is a lovely sort of a wrap cardigan here, as you can you can see there. Uh, I think that is the only one that's probably not available as a kit. Then we've got um, Foxglove, which is um, a yoke fur isle, which is all knitted in the round, but then it's got a lace body and it's tunic length, and that is really lovely, also available as a kit. Um, then we have a couple of plain garments, um, solid colour garments, I wouldn't say they're plain because there's a lot of stitch on them, which is beach which is probably one of my favourite designs too it's an oversized sort of wrap cardigan and it's just so cosy um, when it's really really cold outside and looks great over a dress um, or a skirt or whatever it's just just a lovely lovely garment to wear then we've got um, then we've got this one here so there which is which is really nice too which is no over oversized garment um, and that's called ivy and then there is a crochet design in the book I haven't done much crochet this is probably the first crochet and the only crochet design I've done so far in my British Breeds and this is Aula and this came into being because I was asked um, to produce a design for the Shetland Wool Week and, which, and I did this design in using Spindrift so the colours are slightly different, so I decided to um, recolour it and put it into gentle. So that's what you've got there. And then we've got four um, different um, accessories as well within the collection. So we've got the Veronica cowl, which is this here, which is a really nice, simple, easy one to do and great for beginners. Um, the poppy scarf. Um, again which is an easy one to do because it's it's done in the round and there's not too many colour changes easily made into a cowl if you just do less less repeats um, so that's really nice then we've got some lovely lovely socks which everyone really loves they're, they're the looping socks so that's um, also a lovely time so you can see the crown on there so um, that's really what I love doing um, that's really my life really um, and I'm very, very lucky. I'm very happy with what I do and um, and everything. And I'm so sort of um, thankful that John um, decided to um, produce my yarn for me. So um, I'm very, very, very lucky from from that point of view. And he, and um, all the team do a fabulous job. Um, and now, sort of over the last year or so. The amount that I've needed to be produced has increased by quite a bit and they've and they've really kept up with that production schedule so I'm really really pleased about that um, and um, but the, the great thing is that um, everyone who seems to knit my yarn really loves, loves it and wants to come back and knit more which is just fabulous for me and I get some wonderful emails 
from people saying how how much they like my design work and how much they love the yarn and everything and it's and it's just fabulous. So um so I hope you enjoy the rest of the um open weekend um with John and Julia and and their lovely team and um and if you want to check out more about what I do and um, my design work and everything, then just please go to my website, which is mariewalling.com. OK, so I hope you've enjoyed listening to me. I hope I've not bored you too much. And um, yeah, so um, enjoy the rest of your um, of your open weekend. Bye bye.